Exodus 6. Then the Lord told Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. When he feels the force of my strong hand, he will let the people go. In fact, he will force them to leave his land. And God said to Moses, I am Yahweh, the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty. But I did not reveal my name, Yahweh, to them. And I reaffirmed my covenant with them. Under its terms, I promised to give them the land of Canaan, where they were living as foreigners. You can be sure that I have heard the groans of the people of Israel, who are now slaves to the Egyptians, and I am well aware of my covenant with them. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord. I will free you from your oppression and will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will claim you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who has freed you from your oppression in Egypt. I will bring you into the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own possession. I am the Lord. So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said, but they refused to listen any more. They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and tell him to let the people of Israel leave his country. But Lord, Moses objected, my own people won't listen to me anymore. How can I expect Pharaoh to listen? I'm such a clumsy speaker. But the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, and it gave them orders for the Israelites and for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord commanded Moses and Aaron to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. These are the ancestors of some of the clans of Israel. The sons of Reuben, Israel's oldest son, were Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. Their descendants became the clans of Reuben. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shal. Shal's mother was a Canaanite woman. Their descendants became the clans of Simeon. These are the descendants of Levi, as listed in their family records. The sons of Levi were Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. Levi lived to be 137 years old. The descendants of Gershon included Libni and Shimei, each of whom became the ancestor of a clan. The descendants of Kohath included Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. Kohath lived to be 133 years old. The descendants of Merari included Mali and Mushi. These are the clans of the Levites as listed in their family records. Amram married his father's sister, Jokbed and she gave birth to his sons, Aaron and Moses. Amram lived to be 137 years old. The sons of Izhar were Korah, Nepheg, and Zikri. The sons of Uziel were Mishael, Elzaphan, and Sithri. Aaron married Elisheba, the daughter of Aminadab and sister of Nashon, and she gave birth to his sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. The sons of Korah were Asir, Elkanah, and Abiasaph. Their descendants became the clans of Korah. Eliezer, son of Aaron, married one of the daughters of Putiel, and she gave birth to his son, Phinehas.
Finhas, Finhas. These are the ancestors of the Levite families listed according to their clans. The Aaron and Moses named in the list are the same ones to whom the Lord said, Lead the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt like an army. It was Moses and Aaron who spoke to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, about leading the people of Israel out of Egypt. When the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, he said to him, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, everything I am telling you. But Moses argued with the Lord, saying, I can't do it. I'm such a clumsy speaker. Why should Pharaoh listen to me? Exodus 7. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pay close attention to this. I will make you seem like God to Pharaoh, and your brother, Aaron, will be your prophet. Tell Aaron everything I commanded you, and Aaron must command Pharaoh to let the people of Israel leave his country. But I will make Pharaoh's heart stubborn, so I can multiply my miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. Even then, Pharaoh will refuse to listen to you. So I will bring down my fist on Egypt. Then I will rescue my forces, my people, the Israelites, from the land of Egypt with great acts of judgment. When I raise my powerful hand and bring out the Israelites, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded them. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron was 83 when they made their demands to Pharaoh. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Pharaoh will demand, show me a miracle. When he does this, say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down in front of Pharaoh and it will become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did what the Lord had commanded them. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh called in his, called in his own wise men and sorcerers, and these Egyptian magicians did the same thing with their magic. They threw down their staffs which also became serpents. But then Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Pharaoh's heart, however, remained hard. He refused to listen, just as the Lord had predicted. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn, and he still refuses to let the people go. So go to Pharaoh in the morning, and as he goes down to the river, Stand on the bank of the Nile and meet him there. But be sure to take along the staff that turned into a snake. Then announce to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to tell you, Let my people go, so they can worship me in the wilderness. Until now you have refused to listen to him. So this is what the Lord says, I will show you that I am the Lord. Look, I will strike the water of the Nile with this staff in my hand, and the river will turn to blood. The fish in it will die, and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink any water from the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, take your staff and raise your hand over the waters of Egypt. All its rivers, canals, ponds, and all the reservoirs. Turn all the water to blood. Everywhere in Egypt, the water will turn to blood, even the water stored in wooden bowls and stone pots. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. As Pharaoh and all of his officials watched, Aaron raised his staff and struck the water of the Nile. Suddenly, the whole river turned to blood. The fish in the river died, and in the water became and the water became so foul that the Egyptians couldn't drink it. 
There was blood everywhere throughout the land of Egypt. But again, the magicians of Egypt used their magic and they too turned water into blood. So Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. Pharaoh returned to his palace and put the whole thing out of his mind. Then all the Egyptians dug along the riverbank to find drinking water, for they couldn't drink the water from the Nile. Seven days passed from the time the Lord struck the Nile. Exodus 8 Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh and announce to him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs across your entire land. The Nile River will swarm with frogs. They will come up out of the river and into your palace, even in your bedroom and onto your bed. They will enter the house houses of your officials and your people. They will even jump into your ovens and your kneading bowls. Frogs will jump on you, your people, and all your officials. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, raise the staff in your hand over all the rivers, canals, and ponds of Egypt, and bring up frogs all over the land. So Aaron raised his hand over the waters of Egypt, and frogs came up and covered the whole land. But the magicians were able to do the same thing with their magic. They too caused frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and begged, Plead with the Lord to take the frogs away from me and my people. I will let your people go so they can offer sacrifices to the Lord. You set the time, Moses replied. Tell me when you want me to pray for you, your officials and your people. Then you and your houses will be rid of the frogs. They will remain only in the Nile River. Do it tomorrow, Pharaoh said. All right, Moses replied. It will be as you have said. Then you will know that there is no one like the Lord, our God. The frogs will leave you and your houses, your officials, and your people. They will remain only in the Nile River. So Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh's palace, and Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs he had inflicted on Pharaoh. And the Lord did just what Moses had predicted. The frogs in the houses, the courtyards, and the fields all died. The Egyptians piled them into great heaps, and a terrible stench filled the land. But when Pharaoh saw that that relief had come, he became stubborn. He refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. So the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, raise your staff and strike the ground. The dust will turn into swarms of gnats throughout the land of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded them. When Aaron raised his hand and struck the ground with his staff, gnats infested the entire land, covering the Egyptians and their animals. All the dust in the land of Egypt turned into gnats. Pharaoh's magicians tried to do the same thing with their secret arts, but this time they failed. And the gnats covered everyone, people and animals alike. This is the finger of God, the magicians exclaimed to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He wouldn't listen to them just as the Lord had predicted. And the Lord told Moses, Get up early in the morning and stand in Pharaoh's way as he goes down to the river. Say to him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse, then I will send swarms of flies on you, your officials, your people, and all the houses. The Egyptian homes will be filled with flies, and the ground will be covered with them. But this time I will spare the region of Goshen, where my people live. No flies will be found there. Then you will know that I am the Lord, 
and that I am present even in the heart of your land. I will make a clear distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous sign will happen tomorrow. And the Lord did just as he had said. A thick swarm of flies filled Pharaoh's palace and the house of his officials. The whole land of Egypt was thrown into chaos by the flies. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. All right, go ahead and offer your sacrifices to your God, he said. But do it here in this land. But Moses replied, that wouldn't be right. The Egyptians detest the sacrifices that we offer to the Lord our God. Look, if we offer our sacrifices here where the Egyptians can see us, they will stone us. We must take a three-day trip into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God, just as he has commanded us. All right, go ahead. Pharaoh replied, I will let you go into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord your God, but don't go too far away. Now hurry and pray for me. Moses answered, As soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord, and tomorrow the swarms of flies will disappear from you and your officials and all your people. But I am warning you, Pharaoh, don't lie to us again and refuse to let the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses left Pharaoh's palace and pleaded with the Lord to remove all the flies. And the Lord did as Moses asked and caused the swarm of flies to disappear from, from Pharaoh, his officials, and his people. Not a single fly remained, but Pharaoh again became stubborn and refused to let the people go. Exodus 9 Go back to Pharaoh the Lord commanded Moses. Tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says, let my people go so they can worship me. If you continue to hold them and refuse to let them go, the hand of the Lord will strike all your livestock, your horses, donkeys, camels, cattle, sheep, and goats with a deadly plague. But the Lord will again make a distinction between the livestock of the Israelites and that of the Egyptians. Not a single one of Israel's animals will die. The Lord has already set the time for the plague to begin. He has declared that he will strike the land tomorrow. And the Lord did just as he had said. The next morning, all the livestock of the Egyptians died, but the Israelites didn't lose a single animal. Pharaoh sent his officials to investigate, and they discovered that the Israelites had not lost a single animal. But even so, Pharaoh's heart remained stubborn, and he still refused to let the people go. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from a brick kiln and have Moses toss it into the air while Pharaoh watches. The ashes will spread like fine dust over the whole land of Egypt, causing festering boils to break out on people and animals throughout the land. So they took soot from a brick kiln and went and stood before Pharaoh. As Pharaoh watched, Moses threw the soot into the air, and boils broke out on the people and animals alike. Even the Egyptians were unable to stand before Moses because the boils had broken out on them and all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and just as the Lord had predicted to Moses, Pharaoh refused to listen. Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go so they can worship me. If you don't, I will send more plagues on you and your officials and your people. Then you will know that there is no one like me in all the earth. By now I could have lifted my hand and struck you and your people with a plague to wipe you off the face of the earth. But I have spared you for a purpose, to show you my power and to spread my fame throughout the earth. But you still 
lord it over my people and refuse to let them go so tomorrow at this time i will send a hailstorm more devastating than any in all the history of egypt quick Order your livestock and servants to come in from the fields to find shelter. Any person or animal left outside will die when the hail falls. Some of Pharaoh's officials were afraid because of what the Lord had said. They quickly brought their servants and livestock in from the fields. But those who paid no attention to the word of the Lord left theirs out in the open. Then the Lord said to Moses, Lift your hand toward the sky, so hail may fall on the people, the livestock, and all the plants throughout the land of Egypt. So Moses lifted his staff toward the sky, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and lightning flashed toward the earth. The Lord sent a tremendous hailstorm against all the land of Egypt. Never in all the history of Egypt had there been a storm like that, with such devastating hail and continuous lightning. It left all the all of Egypt in ruins. The hail struck down everything in the open field, people, animals, and plants alike. Even the trees were destroyed. The only place without hail was the region of Goshen, where the people of Israel lived. Then Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron. This time I have sinned, he confessed. The Lord is the righteous one and my people and I are wrong. Please beg the Lord to end this terrifying thunder and hail. We've had enough. I will let you go. You don't need to stay any longer. All right, Moses replied. As soon as I leave the city, I will lift my hands and pray to the Lord. Then the thunder and hail will stop, and you will know that the, that the earth belongs to the Lord. But I know that you and your officials still do not fear the Lord God. All the flax and barley were ruined by the hail, because the barley had formed heads and the flax was budding. But the wheat and the emmer, emmer wheat were spared, because they had not yet sprouted from the ground. So Moses left Pharaoh's court and went out of the city. When he lifted his hands to the Lord, the thunder and hail stopped, and the downpour ceased. But when Pharaoh saw that the rain, hail, and thunder had stopped, he and his officials sinned again, and Pharaoh again became stubborn. Because his heart was hard, Pharaoh refused to let the people leave, just as, as the Lord had predicted through Moses. Exodus 10 Then the Lord said to Moses, Return to Pharaoh and make your demands again. I have made him and his officials stubborn, so I can display my miraculous signs among them. I've also done it so you can tell your children and grandchildren about how I made a mockery of the Egyptians and about the signs I displayed among them, and so you will know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. How long will you refuse to submit to me? Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse, watch out, for tomorrow I will bring a swarm of locusts on your country. They will cover the land so that you won't be able to see the ground. They will devour what little is left of your crops after the hailstorm, including all the trees growing in the fields. They will overrun your palaces and the homes of your officials and all the houses in Egypt. Never in the history of Egypt have your ancestors seen a plague like this one. And with that, Moses turned and left Pharaoh. Pharaoh's officials now came to Pharaoh and appealed to him, How long will you let this man hold us hostage? Let the men go to worship the Lord their God. Don't you realize that Egypt lies in ruins? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. All right, he told them. 
go and worship the Lord your God, but who exactly will be going with you? Moses replied, We will all go, young and old, our sons and daughters, and our flocks and herds. We must all join together in celebrating a festival for, to the Lord. Pharaoh retorted, The Lord will certainly need to be with you if I let you take your little ones. I can see through your evil plan. Never. Only the men may go and worship the Lord, since that is what you requested. And Pharaoh threw them out of the palace. Then the Lord said to Moses, Raise your hand over the land of Egypt to bring on the locusts. Let them cover the land and devour every plant that survived the hailstorm. So Moses raised his staff over Egypt, and the Lord caused an east wind to blow over the land all that day and through the night. When the morning arrived, the east wind had brought the locust, and the locust swarmed over the whole land of Egypt, settling in dense swarms from one end of the country to the other. It was the worst locust plague in Egyptian history, and there has never been another one like it. For the locust covered the whole country and darkened the land. They devoured every plant in the fields and all the fruit on the trees that had survived the hailstorm. Not a single leaf was left on the trees and plants throughout the land of Egypt. Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron. I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you, he confessed. Forgive my sin just this once and plead with the Lord your God to take away this death from me. So Moses left Pharaoh's court and pleaded with the Lord. The Lord responded by shifting the wind, and the strong west wind blew the locust into the Red Sea. Not a single locust remained in all the land of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart again, so he refused to let the people go. Then the Lord said to Moses, Lift your hand toward heaven, and the land of Egypt will be covered with a darkness so thick you can feel it. So Moses lifted his hand to the sky, and a deep darkness covered the entire land of Egypt for three days. During all that time, the people could not see each other, and no one moved. But there was light as usual where the people of Israel lived. Finally, Pharaoh called for Moses. Go and worship the Lord, he said, but leave your flocks and herds here. You may even take your little ones with you. No, Moses said, you must provide us with animals for sacrifices and burnt offerings to the Lord our God. All our livestock must go with us too. Not a hoof can be left behind. We must choose our sacrifices for the Lord our God from among these animals, and we won't know how we are to worship the Lord until we get there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart once more, and he would not let them go. Get out of here, Pharaoh shouted at Moses. I'm warning you, never come back to see me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Very well, Moses replied. I will never see your face again. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for fellowshipping with me today. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>